by myself. <laughs> um, he told me 10 minutes max before my period. So I just don't know when. He hasn't texted me to say it started yet. Or not. The only caveat to that is, um, <coughs> and I'll say this anyway, I'll say the only caveat is that they are, the doctor needs to administer that they are activated then. So if they're already still going up, it's not going to work because then it's only going to come up in a day or two for a female who's in labor. The remainder of that time will be up. So that means only next month. Good evening, everyone. We're currently in the cool down period for uh, South Carolina. They should be arriving within the next seven or so minutes. Um, while we await <coughs> the head coach and student athletes that will join me on the dais, a few housekeeping items. Um, I ask that everyone please silence your cell phones. A uh, reminder that this is a hybrid press conference with media on site yourselves as well as via Zoom. I'll go to questions first on site as time, and then Zoom as time allows. For those in the room, I ask that you raise your hands to be called upon. I will acknowledge you with a nod, try to get to as many people as possible within the room, um, knowing that time um, is, we have a certain time limit for both the student athletes and um, head coach. We'll start with an opening statement. We'll field questions to the student athletes. I'll then dismiss the student athletes and then we'll field questions to coach. Once the student athletes and coach come and we start the press conference on the dais, the locker room will be open. The student athletes that are here on the dais will, once they're dismissed, move to the mix zone and they will finish their locker room availability in that area. Thanks. No, you want to hand them out to the folks in the room. I just needed a handful for the two teams that are here.
I can't, y'all, I can't do that. I could do a good amount. I, I might be able to do that, but no, I can't do that. <laughs> Well, I've worked with you for a lot of years now, too. We, we got about, what year is this? This is 20, wait, this is 2024. I've worked with you at least since 2013. At least, so I should know you, yes. Yeah, I started Women's College World Series in 2013. Well, I've, well at least, tw- so then, 2015, that's still, a, I should know your name by now. <laughs> different world now, but my day job, director of communication operations at Fox News. <laughs> Kenwa, we're good, right? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me, me, me and Jonathan did the Spider-Man, Spider-Man. What are you doing? What are you doing here? Awesome. I don't know what happened. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? Get my screen to go. Good evening and welcome to the NCAA Division I Women's Final Four National Semifinal Game One Post Game Press Conference. Joining us here on the dais, we have Head Coach Dawn Staley, Student Athletes Tahina Pow Pow and Ashley Wat- Ashlyn Wats- Watkins. Excuse me, I don't have my script in front of me. They got me going. I thought you were about to say Swatkins. No, just <laughs> Watkins. Okay. At this time, Coach, we ask that you provide an opening statement and then we'll field questions to our student athletes. Um, just want to congratulate um, NC State for um, for making it to the final four and making it hard for us. Um, it was not an easy win, although you know the score may say differently. But I mean, we had to play for 40 minutes in order for us to to win the basketball game. So um, really proud of of them and their effort to get to the final four. Um, and then I'm I'm just proud of our team um, to be able to um, play on this big stage and. And and not play our best basketball in the first half and come back out um, and make some uh, some small adjustments and 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 meet the moment to, to get us to Sunday. At this time, we'll begin questions with the stu- with the student athletes. Michelle, I saw you go first, and we'll go to you, David, on our right hand side. Michelle, if you could raise your hand again. Hi, Michelle Smith from the Next. Tahina, this one's for you. Is this why you transferred to have an opportunity to play for a national championship? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And now that we're here, it uh, doesn't feel real, but I'm so happy that we made it. And we got one more game left, and we're really looking excited for that. At David Cloninger Post and Courier, Ashland, 20 rebounds. You said, I think, last game you just wanted to supply some energy. Was that a focal point today, or was it just doing whatever you could to, to help the team? Um, I think it was just doing whatever I could to help the team. I really wasn't like, that wasn't really a goal of mine, but I just went out there and just played uh, my best basketball. We're going to go to our left. Please proceed. Oh. Uh, Dan Lobby, Cleveland Icon. For, for both of you, it, what kind of happened in that third quarter? What changed for you coming out of the locker room? I feel like we wanted it. When our locker room talked, we wanted it. We, I knew, I can tell by our faces, I can tell by our voices, we wanted it more. Yeah, I mean, we just told each other that we're good. Um, we've been in this position before and that we just got to come out wanting it more, and we did, and um, we locked in on both sides of the court. All right, Trey Modlin, WOVU 95.9 FM. Talk about how important it was to hold NC State to five assists for the game. Um, I thought that was great. 
Um, <laughs> our really our main priority of the game was to box out and rebound. Their guards average um, about six rebounds a game, eight rebounds a game. So our main priority was to box out and rebound. But when you play defense like that, it's you know we're locked in and you know we try to keep that keep it going. Over to our right, if you could raise your hand. Thank you, Lindsay. Power plays uh, for. What was, you said that in the locker room you just were talking about how you wanted it more. Is there any particular person? Was it a speech from Don? Was it you, Tahina, who was kind of speaking up? Who's vocal in those moments? Um, we all spoke as a team. Um, that's how close we are in genuine bond. Is that we know that we can do better, and everyone spoke up, and we just had to, you know, we just had to trust each other and know that we're gonna um, come out in the third and you know do what we do, and that's what happened. We're gonna go to our right front row. If you could just raise your hand so student athletes can see you. They're up here. <laughs> All right, uh, Dion Cash, Fox Sports. Um, you gotten so close to a championship. How does it feel to be at this point right now, one game away uh, from the chip? Uh, it feels good. Well, we know our job. The job isn't done yet. We're gonna have to play our butts off Sunday. We're gonna stay to our right, Jim. Hey, Jim Trotter from The Athletic. Don and, and you all, I wanted to ask you your thoughts when Camilla went down um, at that point, and how is she at this point um, in terms of preparation for Sunday? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, pardon me. You want me to answer that? That was a, yeah, we're holding on questions for Coach. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yep, all so right. we'll start with. I'm um, not going to answer that. Yeah, she's all right. She played. Yeah, absolutely. What, cool. they, uh, what they were thinking. When she went down, okay, go y'all can answer that. We'll start with <laughs> Ashlyn. I she wanted a medical update. <laughs> well, I knew she was gonna be okay. Camilla's a warrior. She's not gonna let oh, like a little injury like that affect her. She's gonna push and she and she's gonna be ready for Sunday. She's gonna like this answer, but she's a beautiful Brazilian warrior. <laughs> um, she's just awesome, man. She's gonna play through some pain, but that's just who she is, and she, you know, loves playing the game. So she's gonna push through that, and knowing that we got one more game, she's she's definitely gonna be okay. We'll take our next question online. We'll go to Joshua Louder. Joshua, please proceed with your question. Joshua Louder, Joshua Louder, Television Network. Um, my question is for the student athletes. Um, Twenty-nine to six run. Um, just where did you all hang your hat, whether that offensively or defensively, and um, ultimately that led to tonight's uh, win. Congratulations. Tahina, can we start with you first, and then we'll move to Ashlyn. I mean, Coach told us that it was a six-point quarter for them, and we were just like shocked because it didn't feel like that. It just felt like we were out there being locked in on defense and offense, and we just played the game that we know how to play. Um, at some points, we don't really know what's going on. We just know that we're having fun, and we just love being out there with each other. Yeah, um, we just play good defense, really. Any additional questions for our student athletes in the back? Robert Fembers, Cleveland.com. Um, you know, in that first half, I think you had a 10 turnovers, and then in the second, only five after that. How were you able to kind of, you know, stiffen up and really, you know, carry through in that last uh, stretch? Yeah, I contributed four of them. Um, <laughs> I don't like that stat. Um, seeing four turnovers next to my name, it, it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm mad at myself for letting that happen, especially in this type of game. Um, I know I'll do better, but we knew that we just got to do the simple stuff. We were trying to be too flashy. Some of us were trying to be a hero. And you know when we move the ball like how we did, it you know it makes the game fun and more easier. And we just know that we just got to do the simple things. Yeah, we're gonna stay to the back. Yep. Hi, I'm DJ Lily Jade with 95.9. And first of all, congratulations. And so this is the question for both of you guys. How do you guys stay locked in? Because you've won 36 games. So how do you stay locked in and focused in the game? If we could start with Ashlyn first. Um, for me, I think we, we have a lot of fun and we know when to be serious. We, I think we have a good balance. And that balance is what helps us stay like, locked in. Like, we know we can play around with coaching each other, but we know when to be serious. 
Yeah, um, it's very balanced with our team. We know when to take care of business and we know when to have fun with it. Um, but we've done a great job so far and hopefully we can take care of business on Sunday and have even more fun. Mm -hmm. We're gonna stay to our right. Uh, Cora Hall for the Greenville News. Ashton, I wanted to ask you, you know, you're back this year in a different role for this team to come up so big tonight. How does it feel different and, and what does it mean to you to have you know, this performance in the Final Four? Um, it feels good. It feels good to show like what I can do and help my team. Like, of course, I'm going to try to do anything that I can help my team win, and that's what I did today. We're going to say to our right. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you. Hey, ladies. Um, at one point in the third quarter, you guys went on a 17 to one run, and I just wonder if you can kind of put into words or compare it to something what it feels like to be in that moment, to be that free and that focus, and to have that kind of dominance. Is that question for both? Okay, we'll start with you, uh, Ashlyn, again. Um, I think that's just that's what happens when you share the ball. Our team is not a selfish team. We know how to pass, and we know like what the um, right shot to take is, and that's what we did. We like to share the ball, and that's what happens when you share the ball. Yeah, our coach allows us to play free and play with each other and just um, be able to make adjustments mid-game and share the ball, as Ash said, and just be who we are, and that's who we are. We like to share the ball, and you know, when the ball goes in, you see you know, a couple of people also get the ball in, and it just creates a, a rotation, and that's what happened, and um, it felt good. <laughs> Any additional questions for our student athletes? Seeing none, ladies, thank you so much for your time this evening. Um, they will be now moving to the mix zone. A reminder that the locker room is open until 9.39. Start with questions for Dawn. We'll go to Jonathan, and then we'll move to Lindsay, and then we'll work around the room. I see you, Dion. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Congratulations, Dawn. Watching Camilla play the way she played tonight and then watching you talking to Aaliyah as you were coming off the floor, it reminded me of what you used to say about Aaliyah and hope, knowing that she would one day play in single coverage, I think is how you put it, a couple of years ago. And to know that you again now have a post player who can be that dominant in as big a game as this, what does it mean for you as the coach and the game planner and the tactician to have that? Um, I mean, you play to your strengths. Camilla is a strength of ours. Um, she's six seven. She's agile. Um, she can um, command the paint. Um, she played with a, um, a desire to win. Um, I think she asked for the ball a couple of times as well, meaning get her the ball. Um, and it's that, you know, it's a I don't want to lose. I don't want our season to end in any way except the way I envisioned. And that's winning the national championship. And when you can put your play behind your vision, um, it, it makes a beautiful memory. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Don, to the point about Camilla, when I watched her today, what I was thinking is, I think she's gotten a lot better throughout this season. That's really hard to do because players are typically focused on the team, scouting reports. How has she been able to do that? And what ways do you see how she's improved since November? Um, Camilla's a better practice player. She's a better preparer. Like she is more aware of or more, more in tuned. I mean, I, I think she knows exactly what we need her to do. Um, she watches film a lot more like on her own. She watches with Coach Boyer. Like she was more willing to do all those other things to create an advantage for her when she's out there on the floor. Um, and then she is um, imposing her will um, each and every. Like, she'll, she'll take two steps forward, one step back. Um, but they all do that. They, they all, as players um, in this game, and you're playing at a high level, it's hard to just do that consistently. Um, so, I mean, greatness is a process. And she's still very much, in the, I think, in the beginning stages of her greatness. I think you'll see her play a lot better when she's with pro players. We're going to stay to our right. Dion, you'll go first. Kareem, we'll move to you, and then I'll get to the side room. Please uh, proceed. Dion Cash, Fox Sports. Congratulations, Coach. Um, what did you say to him after the first quarter? You guys shut him down to six, to six for 28 from the second and third quarters as far as scoring. Um, Isaiah James had eight points in the first quarter. 
She ended up with 20, but she shot 17 times. What did you say to them to have that huge run in the third quarter? Um, I mean, it's more just simplifying. I mean, what we were doing, and we were victims of what we worked on, and especially ball screen action. We knew they were going to go under, so we worked a little bit on rescreening. And, and, and once they started icing us, we just kept trying to do the same things and, you know, basically stop dribbling, more passing, more ball movement. And, and, and once we started having that, it, I mean, it wasn't magic. It was, it was just simple basketball. And then we, we just started getting stops and we got easy buckets and then we executed in the half court and built ourselves a, a, a pretty good lead. And at that point, it was just trying to keep the lead and play good basketball because we feel like good basketball is contagious and bad basketball is contagious. So we want to take some, some good basketball into Sunday. Thank you. I'm going to stay to our right with Kareem. Go ahead. Hey, Don, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. What about that third quarter defense did you like the most? Um, I, I, I like the fact that we, we, we turned up. We turned up um, the heat. I mean, we put a lot more pressure on them to, to go deeper in their offense. We put a lot more pressure on the basketball, um, especially their point guards, um, the people that were initiating their offense. Um, so. You know, if you can, if you get them to play a little bit outside of their comfort zone, um, you're you're disrupting and you're dictating. And I thought we did a lot more of that in the third quarter. That created some easy buckets for us. We're going to move to our left. Uh, Don McClary, Keon Sports. Coach, first of all, congrats on the win. Uh, in that third quarter, uh, where you only held NC State to um, six, six points. You guys held them to zero three-point shots, and we live in an age where the three-point shot is king. How important was that to keep them to such a low percentage, zero, in the lowest of the game? And was that speak to your players as well on defense? Um, we, we did a much better job than probably the last two games we had in, in running people off the three-point line and making them play, making them to us rather than three us. Um, it was their willingness to lock in just lock in. They, they didn't want to lose. So a lot of what they said, um, Powell and, and Ashland was, you know, well before we went into the locker room to talk to them, they've, you know, they, they had things squared away. Um, they're like that. Um, and they were probably talking more so about um, defense and rebounding. And then when we came in, it was more about just making sure that we are disciplined on our ball screen defense, which was very good in the third quarter. And and simplifying offensively. So, I mean, that's how you open the game up when you're able to have that kind of stretch. Coach, we're going to switch to our right and go to Chantel, then we'll move to the back and go to Cam and then back up front. Hey, Don, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Coming into this year, other than Camilla and Raven, you didn't have anyone who averaged more than 13 minutes a game as a returner. Now you have nine players that average 15 plus minutes a game. At what point in sort of the formulation of this group did you know you'd be able to run with nine deep? And how much of a strength of that is yours, do you think? Um, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, when you go through a season, and especially in the beginning of the season, they're, they're all thinking they should start. They're all thinking they should play. Um, and then you have to figure out what unit works well together. And then you got to come up with a starting five. Like, and our starting five was who we started tonight. Um, and then uh, Ashton probably was a little disappointed that she wasn't a part of the starting five. But I do think it was the best thing for her development. Um, so, and then you got Saniya Fagan, who probably thought she should have been starting. Um, but it's more about combinations and who plays well together. Obviously, Camilla was going to be a focal point for us. So who plays better with Camilla um, in November? And, and, you know, now who plays best with Camilla in April? Um, right now it's Ash because Ash is just – and there's nothing that Chloe's not doing, and it's everything that Ash is doing. And so, I mean, each and every game we could, we could count on a different player. And – that was enough for them to build some confidence, even if they didn't play as much as they wanted to play the next game. But you can go back to them and you talk to them and you, you make it make sense to them. You don't lie to them. You don't sell them a false dream. You say, here's why you're playing. Here's why you're not playing. Here's why this person's playing more than you. Um, here's why you're not. 
and here's how you get more minutes. And, and they believe it. They believe it because when, it, when, when their number's called, you know, they come through. And I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a luxury. It really is a luxury to have the ability to play as many players that we're playing. Coach, we're going to shift to our left. We'll go Cam, we'll come back up to the front, and then we'll move back. Coach Cameron Teague with the Athletic. I don't know, is it possible for you to put into words just how impressive a 20 rebound performance is for Ashlyn mm -hmm. and how important that was to you, especially when Camilla got hurt and, and she, she was still there to fill, to fill the boards? I saw the two that she didn't go for. <laughs> one of the first half and one of the second. Like, they were like, I told her that coming off the court. Like, you didn't even go for the two that were right there in front of you. Um, I mean, Ash is Ash. Ash is, um, she's a leaper, she's a jumper, she's a reactor. Um, for her to come through for us um, was big. We don't, we, we don't win the game without her contributions, and I knew at the beginning of the game, I think Holly Rowe asked me before the game, what person? And obviously, Camilla's a focal point, so I, I know she's got to have a good game, but the X factor for me was, was Ashlyn Watkins. Her ability to defend, her ability to rebound, her ability, I mean, the block shot was impressive. The block shot in the third quarter was super impressive. So, I mean, she's got good reaction time, and you know, we're very fortunate that she plays for, for us. We're going to stay to our left, front row. Hey, Don. Excuse me. Uh, Chapel Fowler with the state. Saw that Raven Johnson left late. Is she going to be okay for Sunday as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raven, unless she's uh, unless she's going to be rolling around here in the wheelchair, she's going to play. Best believe that. Okay, we're going to go back to the second to last row. I believe it was in the red or purple. One of you raised your hand. <clears throat> Crystal Stone for Rising Media Stars. Uh, we've heard some of your players throughout the season say that this postseason run is personal. And Raven Samo or Raven, excuse me, Raven Johnson saying that this was revenge season for her. How much is that message uh, driven from your view, the passion of your teams to win? I, I, I give them their, that, that space. Whatever it is that can get them to execute and play and practice the way we need to, to prep for games, have at it. Um, for me, it's, it's, about, um, it's about coaching and teaching and um, figuring out a way to um, allow our players to have their dreams come true. I don't, I don't attach anything to, to our team besides um, being disciplined on how we need to play. Um, whatever, whatever Raven needs to, to keep her playing at a, a confident level, whether it's a revenge tour or whatever she comes up with, because it's every day she'll come up with something. So um, if, you, if you go ask her a question, she'll say something else. So it, it's all kinds of tours, um, but I hope it, it ends in <laughs> being a national champion. We're staying to our left coach, second row. Trey Modlin, WOVU 95.9 <laughs> FM. Your team had four free throw attempts for the game, two in the second half when the game was more out of hand. How much of a point of emphasis will that be going into Sunday to, to be able to get to the line more? I don't, I don't think we control that. I don't think we control that. I mean, I mean, Camilla, I mean, we scored 44 points in the paint. Uh, I don't think it's all clean, but we're, we're not going to worry about anything besides scoring more points than the next our next opponent, we, we can't, that's, that's one, one area we can't control. Um, but we can't control how we execute, how we put the ball in the hole, how we rebound the basketball, how we execute ball screen defense, how we, you know, how we win loose, loose balls um, in the intangible game. So I didn't even realize that. How many did they get? 18, 13, 18. We're going to move to our right. Uh, Cora Hall with the Greenville News. You've talked about Ashton a little bit, and I know you've talked about in the past her embracing being the sixth woman, but in terms of just her role specifically, she does a lot of the gritty stuff, getting on the boards, her defense, being a rim protector. Just how has she embraced that aspect of it? What stood out to you about the way that she really gets in there and does all those things for you guys? Um, I mean, Ashton just wants to win. Um, and Ashton also wants to feel special. 
and probably each and every one of our players want to feel special. And we try really hard to make them feel special and make it make sense to them. Uh, we know they want, she wants, I know she wanted to start. Um, and we talk, we talk probably not right after the starting lineup was, uh, was, was named. Um, sh but, you know, we talked about her starting, we talked about why, um, and, and, you know, we explained it to her and then she went to work, you know, it, it was a, it was something that she couldn't control, but what she could control is, um, working out with me um, once a week, just getting some extra work in and kind of familiarizing herself with where she has spots that she could be effective on the, on the court. She's the one that did that. Like, and then when we decided that's, that's what we were going to do, I didn't text her. I made her text me to make sure this is something that she wanted to do. I, I did forget a couple of times and she reminded me. But it is that, it's, it's a process of being great. It's a process of, of, of trusting, like I do think she trusts me and I do, I trust her. Um, as you can see, I mean, she played, you know, she played a lot of minutes for us. She's a very integral part of our, our success. And, and she only started maybe four or five games this season. Coach, we're gonna swing back to our left-hand side, third row. Hi coach, Hannah Barton, Sports Capital Journalism. I was speaking with Raven in the locker room about two years ago being this time of year injured last year, as she described it, her viral moment in the Final Four loss. And then to come this year and to be heading the national championship game and all of the emotion. And she said she's made a lot of growth. And when I asked her what was behind that, her first answer was Coach Daly and a big nod of the head. So what has the relationship with her been like as you've watched her grow um, from this time two years ago to now? Um, I mean, Ra Raven's process has been and the development has been has been um, a treat um, because she's such a hard worker. Like she's she's so into being great and improving, and she doesn't mind putting the work putting the work you know to to make that happen. Um, she's she's happy. She's a happy young lady. Like she doesn't have bad days. She comes in. She works hard every single day. Now. Some of the stuff that comes out of her mouth is, you know, quite funny. Um, so she keeps me on my toes um, when it comes to that. But, I mean, she's a point guard that has, you know, an insatiable desire to get better and to learn. And for someone like that, I'm going to give her every ounce of me. Like, everything that she can take, I'm just going to pour into her. Um, but she came from a great high school coach, like a great. She won multiple um, – high school championships, state championships. Um, she won multiple AAU championships. So she is. She comes from a pedigree of winning championships. And when you have point guards like that in your, you know, when you, in your program, you know, you, they're pretty consistent with that. We'll take our final question from Lindsay. Please proceed. Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. So Don, this is your ninth final four, your sixth as a coach, and you went to three as a player. Mm -hmm. As a player, you played for one national championship in 91. First, I wondered, do you remember that game pretty vividly? And what, I do. What can you share with us about that game? And also, how many national championships do you need to win as a coach to take away the sting of never winning one as a player? Um, I, I, I do remember 1991, uh, um, New Orleans, correct? Up four with a minute and 20, we lose the basketball game. Um, can I get in trouble by talking about officiating like here, back in 1991? <laughs> I'm not sure. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there were, there, there was questionable calls um, in, in that, and you might have to get, the skinny from Debbie Ryan, because I'm sure she remembers every single play. But I, I, I vividly remember um, us being up four and and not being able to get it done. I, I, I do, I do think it was, you know, wasn't meant to be. And the fact that we won in 2017 um, made it really special. Um, 
special, so special that, um, and I don't want to pat myself on the back, but my teammates, that, that my, my Virginia teammates, when we won, I gave them miniature national championship trophies because they believed in that moment and they were with me in several moments that, that they, they deserved it. I wanted them to feel something tangible of winning a national championship because they gave me the, the desire to want to do it. Now, I didn't think I was going to coach. I thought that was going to be that. But once I got into coaching, I, I wanted to check, off, check that box off. So I don't, we've won two. Um, so that's a distant memory that has now been replaced with winning. And there were, there are much more people that you, you get to celebrate with um, when you do it as a coach. And it's so, it's so gratifying. I want to thank you for your time. Best of luck on Sunday, 3 thank o'clock, you. ABC. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. He does. He he does a concert every time we win the national championship, a free concert. So I'm hoping it's a trade. <laughs> for those in the room, the NC State locker room will be open for an additional seven minutes. South Carolina locker room is closed. South Carolina locker room has now closed. Good evening and welcome back to today's NCAA Division I Women's Basketball National Semifinal Game 1 post-game press conference featuring the NC State Wolfpack. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach Moore and then we'll follow with questions to our student athletes. As a reminder, the student athletes will then be dismissed and then we will open up questions for Coach. So Coach, at this time, we'd ask that you pre give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go to the questions for student athletes. Well, first of all, I, I mentioned earlier, I felt like this was the best South Carolina team they've had uh, because of the, you know, obviously the presence of Cordoza on the block is, is tough to match up with. And then they have so many players that are capable of knocking down three-point shots. And unfortunately, that's kind of what happened in the third period, actually the second half. Uh, you know, we got outscored uh, 44 to 20 in the paint. so. Uh, start of the third quarter, we didn't do a really good job in our man-to-man -man of uh, defending pick on the ball and rotating and things like that. So we tried to go zone and um, probably should have got out of it quicker. But uh, again, give them credit. Uh, third quarter, we got outscored uh, 29 to six, and that was the ball game. So, uh, but again, tip your hat to them. I think they hit six out of ten threes and. Uh, in the second half, and, and again, uh, we're really hurting us in the paint. So, we've got a great team, and, and uh, again, we've had an unbelievable season. I'm proud of these young ladies. The run we've been on uh, just stinks to end it this way, but uh, I'm sure after we've had a time, a little bit of time away from it and can reflect, uh, we'll have a lot to be proud of. At this time, we'll open it up for questions for our student athletes. As a reminder, for those in the room, please raise your hand and we'll get the microphones to you from our microphone. We'll start with Mitchell. We'll go to Lindsay and then we'll work our way over. Yeah, Mitchell Northam, North Carolina Public Radio. Um, for either of the players, you know, Coach mentioned that the third quarter was kind of change of the game. 
Um, the first half was so competitive. What was the big difference in the third quarter? We'll start with Isaiah. Um, <clears throat> like you said, the first half was very competitive. You know, um, I just felt like in the third quarter, we didn't come out in a locker room how we were supposed to come out in a locker room. You know, um, I felt like we could have fought harder. I felt like we hung our heads and, um, you know, got into our heads mentally. Um, you know, as a leader, I, I want to fault myself because I, you know, I could have, I could have helped. I could have said more up there, but at the end of the day, I'm still proud of my team. You know, I want to pick any other girls to play with. You know, um, like Coach Moore said, everybody doubted us and we made it here. So I'm just so proud of them. And River, do you have any additional to add? I mean, yeah, she touched it. Um, we could have come out in the third quarter stronger. I mean. When our offense isn't flowing, we really have to lock in on defense and get stops, and that usually translates and fuels our um, on defense, and then it usually translates and fuels our offense. So, and yeah, just keeping our heads up and picking each other up and keeping our energy—that's when we play our best. We'll stay to our right, Lindsay. Lindsay Gibbs with power plays. Uh, Isaiah, when you left the court, it looked like you and Coach had a moment. Uh, can you share? Do you want to share what was said in that moment and what that what you were feeling? Um, he was just letting me know what I have, what I could have done on that last play um, when I got my shot block. Uh, so it was just a, a you know coach to player moment at that time. And no matter what the score was, you know he still is going to be a coach at the end of the forty minutes always. We're going to move to our left. Yeah, Rob McLam with Inside Pack Sports for both players. Uh, obviously the the close loss at Vitek Tech and then the close loss to Notre Dame and Greensboro. They were almost titles. How did y'all rebound and get to the Final Four from that? And how proud of you are the fact that you at least hung that banner? We'll start with River. Honestly, I think we used the doubts and being underestimated as motivation. Um, I mean, playing Notre Dame in the ACC Championship, losing to Virginia Tech twice, just using that as motivation, watching the film, fixing what we can fix, and just moving on to the next play, the next game um, has benefited us. Um, likewise, um, I feel like uh, River said everything, but the difference between those games and this games, I feel like we didn't move to the next play. I feel like every mistake we made, we hung our head and not look forward to the next play. And we're definitely going to look at film and we're definitely going to fix that. Aaron Farrar, NC State's technician. Um, you both now have a few years under your belt with NC State. How has this run and this team felt different than any other years you've had in the past at pa with the pack? Um, I've been here for three years, and I see a major difference on this team. You know, it's a, I feel like it's a player-led team. We stick together on and off the court. You see the joy. You see the enjoyment. You see the the chemistry that we have. You know, we, it's never a dull moment between these girls. You know, they're not my. They're not just my teammates. These are my sisters. Like, I'm gonna like keep this. Sorry. I'm gonna keep this memory forever. Oh, yeah, I love these people. I love these group of girls forever. Like these are my sisters, and I'm so proud of them. How much hard, like how work, how much hard we worked to get here. Like we left it, we left everything on the court each game, and I'm so grateful to have them. I'm so grateful to have Coach Moore. Yeah. Want to stay to our left? There we are. Brian Pertle with Pack Pride. Uh, just in the final minute there, even even with the score almost final, Wolfpack fans, you know, the, the Wolf Pack chant right towards the end there. What does it say about the culture that this program has that they were, they were sticking up and making themselves heard to the very end? Was that a question for both? Yes. Okay, we'll start with River. Yeah, um, Wolfpack Nation has followed us across the country. Their support is unmatched. Their love is unmatched. Um, I couldn't ask for a better support system, fans. Um, yeah. Yeah, like Wolfpack Nation is like no other. Like, it's our. It's not just the crowd. It's like they're our family. You know, the love that they share with us, and you know, through wins and losses, they always gonna have our backs. We're gonna move to our right, Dion. If you could raise your hand so student athletes can see you. Deion Cash, Fox Sports. Um, congratulations on a great season. In the first quarter, you guys punched first. You hit them in the mouth first. Uh, but it seemed like after that, they were kind of able to kind of catch you guys off guard, kind of throw you off guard a little bit. Was it something different they did? And uh, Miss Baldwin, they had two tremendous 
Biggs inside. You did great, but what was it like battling two of those ladies instead of just one where they, uh, they really worked inside with you guys? Yeah, um, you got to credit the bigs of South Carolina. They do a good job using their physicality. They're big. They keep the ball hot. I mean, Cordoso holds the ball above her head, and I can't reach it. So, I mean, you just have to use your body and make them score over you and try to keep them away from the basket as best as you can. But at the end of the day, it's layups. <laughs> You know, uh, they just they just punched us in the mouth in the third quarter. I feel like the third quarter really hurt us. Um, I feel like we could have fought harder. Um, you know, it was six to twenty nine, so we c we can't let that like things like that happen to win a championship. So yeah, we'll take our final two questions. We'll go Lindsay, and then we'll come back up to the front row. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays River. You spoke um, after the games in Raleigh. We spoke about how this team coming here had made you fall back in love with basketball. Uh, can you <laughs> expand a little bit on that as your college career comes to, um, comes to an end? I wouldn't trade my two years in Raleigh for anything. Um, I found a family here, a true family. They gave me confidence. They made me fall in love with the game again. Having coaches that have confidence in you and trust you and teammates that trust you and love you on and off the court and just knowing you can turn to that family at any time is incredible. Um, the chemistry on this team is unmatched. I've never played with a group of girls like this. Um, just having the run that we have, not only have I fallen in love with basketball again, but we made history at NC State. Um, like I said, I wouldn't trade these two years in Raleigh for anything. We'll take our final question. Daniel Wilson, Inside Pack Sports. Um, Isaiah, obviously this isn't your only a uh, deep tournament run. You were on the Elite Eight team in uh, 2022. Uh, what are the similarities that you've seen from this year's squad and that one? And what are some of the things that you want to carry over and impart on uh, the team next year with the new freshman class coming in uh, as uh, one of the older statesmen now? Yeah, um, like I said before, you know, this, this bond with the team, like I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Like. Even after that loss, we just came in the locker room and, you know, we told each other, you know, this win is going to, I mean, this loss is going to, like, it's going to hurt right now, you know. But we have to still stick together and be a family and still love each other, you know. Um, as a senior next year, I'm going to, you know, still emphasize that the same way. Just we're going to be a sisterhood. We're going to have that strong chemistry on and off the court. So that's, it's going to be stronger. It's going to be even stronger. Thank you very much for your time, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up for questions for Coach. Lindsay, did, are you raising your hand? We'll start with you. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Uh, Coach, when you hear River talk about her time in this program, what does that mean to you, and what has she meant to NC State? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll be hard to replace. Um, yeah, I'm just so proud of her. She really had always been kind of a, almost a role player. And, uh, you know, we talked early in the year and told her she was going to have to be somebody that we run things through. And, you know, in our system, you got to have somebody that's a consistent scorer down there. And uh, just unbelievable what she uh, was able to do. and. Uh, how we leaned on her for inside presence on both ends of the floor. And there was times when maybe the shot wasn't going down, but I couldn't take her off the court because she did such a great job on the boards. Uh, so taking charges, you know, how many uh, post players do you see take as many charges as she has? So uh, I've loved having her. Um, going to miss her, but uh, it's a big – <laughs> You know, right now we've, uh, we're going to be running that donut offense with a big hole in the middle uh, without her. We'll go to Chantel, and then we'll move to Mitchell. 
Hey Wes, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. This team is definitely built differently than some of the recent teams that Don has had in terms of its depth. Can you just give us a sense of the challenges of game planning against and playing against a team where players like Ashlyn Watkins or Miley Shuffle-Wiley are coming off the bench? Oh yeah, you know, uh, Watkins had 20 rebounds tonight. Um, uh, just like I said, just to be able to have such an inside-outside game. Uh, you know, there was times you know, we were trying to maybe double from the weak side on Cordoza or, you know, maybe dig from the ball side and try to get it out of there. But uh, if she, she buries you so deep that, you know, even doubling's hard to do. And then when they shoot it like that, I mean, they came into the game with two players shooting 43% from three and one shooting 47% from three. So we knew it was going to be a challenge. You just hope you catch them on a night when maybe they're not shooting well from the perimeter so that you can give a little more attention uh, to Cardoza. But uh, again, I think it's the best team they've had uh, because of that. So tough matchup. You know, I regret now going to the zone and definitely not getting out of it sooner. But we did. We came out in the third quarter. Uh, we just weren't aggressive enough. And that's on me. You know, I, I don't know what happened. but. Uh, we were a step slow. We, we didn't execute pick on the ball defense. When we did try to double Cardoza, the weak side didn't rotate, and and uh, they got layups. Uh, so again, I should have probably used every timeout I had and tried to get their focus back. But again, they took advantage of it. We'll go to Mitchell. We're going to go to our right hand side. Yeah, Wes. Um, you know, after that Elite Eight run in 22, um, you know, you lose four starters. Um, River and, and Mimi are two of the players that ended up transferring in. Last year, you lose four starters. Those two stick around. This year, they're kind of the super senior veterans, the fifth years. What did they kind of mean, I guess, um, to sort of lead this team and yeah. this new era sort of NC State basketball? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Um, last year, for whatever reason, we, we had – more depth of talent, more experience. You know, we had kids that were on that Elite Eight team. But for whatever reason, that's probably the danger of the portal. It just didn't mesh. And uh, we had some great wins. You know, we beat Iowa on the road. Um, you know, we beat Louisville on the road. I mean, I don't know who all, but we had, we had some great wins. And uh, then down the stretch, uh, we just – we didn't jail. And uh, so – you know, sometimes it's addition by subtraction. We lost some players, and these players knew they were going to be counted on to be leaders, you know, River and Mimi in particular, and uh, some of the others. And, uh, you know, when you put a player in that position, um, you hope that they step up and grab the bull by the horn, and they did. So, a uh, heck of a ride compared to where we started and where we finished. We're going to go to our right. We'll go with Dion, then we'll go Ryan, Rob. All right, Dion Cash, Fox Sports. Uh, congratulations, Coach Moore. In the first half, in the first quarter, you guys punched him in the first half. First half. I mean, first half, we're down one point. So, I mean, again, we tied them in the first quarter, one down in the second quarter. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know that the second quarter we lost anything, but third quarter we lost it. Did, was, what were some of the things that you did well in the first quarter in the first half that you were trying to do in the second half, but it just didn't work? Well, I think combination. Again, I give them credit. They turned up the heat and did a great job defensively. Uh, and like I said, they came out really uh, offensively. They were aggressive. The pick and roll, we didn't, we didn't do a good job of getting up and doing what we wanted to do against it. And we, we looked slow. We looked flat-footed. And then when I saw that and saw how they were killing us inside, we tried to go zone, and, and uh, that didn't look very good either. And, and give them credit. They hit six out of ten threes in the second half. But in the third quarter in particular, they hit five out of nine threes. Uh, so when you're doing that, you know, I noticed uh, at halftime, um, Pow Pow, I think, was 0 for 3, and Bree Hall was 0 for 3 from 3. So in the second half, you know, one of them goes two for two, and the other one goes one for one, and that changes things. Yep, yep, in the third quarter. So they hit shots. Uh, they did a good job defensively. Uh, again, I'll take some of the blame for that. We looked stagnant in the third quarter. We stood around. We went one-on-one -on -one too much. Instead of moving the ball and moving our bodies, 
and uh, putting some pressure on them. So uh, I'll probably throw up a couple of times when I watch the third quarter and second guess the heck out of myself for the next six months. But other than that, hey, I'm happy. <laughs> Hey, Coach, Brian Pertle with Pat Pride. Looking back on that 2022 team, the two players that were on that team, Isaiah James, your leading scorer, Madison Hayes, your leading rebounder for the season. Uh, how big is it now for after this after this run for players that are coming back to have that that experience on the big stage, have Final Four experience going forward? Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's a great experience, and hopefully uh, we can draw from that. You know, I told them today, I thought the last three weeks, our practices were unbelievable, our energy, our focus, we were locked in. And I told them today, you know, hey, next year, let's try to do that, you know, from day one. But uh, yeah, I agree, uh, it, it's got to help. And I mean, this has been an unbelievable experience. You know, I've been a head coach 35 years in college, uh, first time ever to be on this stage myself. And uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, the NCAA, the committee, Cleveland, the host, uh, all, all the people that are involved in this have done an unbelievable job of making you feel, well, we're in Cleveland, like rock stars, OK? Hopefully that little guy doesn't come out. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's a great experience. And hopefully it makes you hungry to want to get back and uh, take another shot at it. We're going to stay to our left, Coach with Rob in the center. Rob McLean with Inside Pack Sports. Uh, I was kind of reminiscing 10 years ago, I was covering you in the WNIT, and now you're here in the Final Four. Uh, you mentioned the team two years ago. Players from both of those teams were in the stands supporting y'all. Yeah. Now you have this banner they're going to hang. This group's going to hang a banner. It'll be yeah. there 25 years. Uh, do you sense a camaraderie building, and do you sense there's a momentum and a love that's kind of building it, that's lifting this thing up? Yeah, that's what's pretty neat. You know, when, uh, of course, I was with Coach Yao for, you know, 93 to 95. Um, so I think when you're out of school, you know, now 11 years here, uh, you have players that played for you your first two or three years, and then you have players that are playing for you now, but they all share that family feeling. And uh, no doubt, it's great to see them here. It's, you know, great for them when they call you, they text you. Um, but definitely, and, and, and that really, even before I got here, because when we have, you know, play for K games are special all over the country, but you can imagine how special they are in Raleigh. And we usually have a lot of our former players back. And it's just amazing, again, the connection the players feel from all eras uh, for playing for NC State. And our fans probably have a lot to do with that as well. I'm going to go back to our right with Lindsay. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Coach, uh, Sanaya had a rough night tonight. Yeah. What do you, what's your message to her? And also, what are you looking forward to going forward with her and as yeah. I as leaders? Yeah, it happens. And again, tough situation, play your former team. And, and I'm sure they wanted to try to make sure she didn't, you know, have a big night as well. And, um, but we wouldn't be here without Sanaya. She's had an unbelievable season and a great leader for us. And, uh, it happens, and uh, you know, again, uh, that's part. Of, that's been our strength all year. When somebody's had a bad night, some you know, one or two other players have stepped up and scored twenty or twenty-five. Uh, we've had, you know, still had five people in double figures. Unfortunately, tonight, you know, we didn't didn't really have a lot of that. But uh, again, bad night to have a bad night. But I give South Carolina a lot of credit for that. Coach, we're going to take a question via Zoom. Joshua Louder, your line is open. You may proceed. Joshua Louder, Joshua Louder, Television Network. Coach Moore, um, congratulations on an incredible. Just how does um, being on this stage make you a better coach <laughs> and your 35 years of coaching? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's. Um, Right now, I don't feel like a very good coach uh, after that butt kicking. But, you know, our players, you know, you got to have players. I always say you don't win the Kentucky Derby with a mule. You got to have horses. And, and our players have just played great, you know, most of the season and most nights. And uh, that's what it's about. You know, I, I learned that lesson. I've probably given you more than you want. But I learned that lesson really well when I got to 
UT Chattanooga. And my first year, we won, I think, 10 games. The next year, we won 26. I did the same exact things. We ran the same stuff. We ran practices. We prepared everything the same. We just had a different set of players. So I learned real early, uh, it's about them. Uh, it's not about me. So great players. We'll take our final question from the back. Uh, Coach, uh, Sean Hearn, uh, Anscape. Um, I'm just curious, what makes coaching against Don Staley uh, difficult to either prepare for or over the course of a game adjust to? Yeah, well, again, she's a great coach and she has great players and that's a tough combination to go up against. Like I said, I think it's the best team. You know, we beat them a few years ago at their place when they had Aaliyah Boston and we were able to kind of cheat off some people and give more attention to, to Boston and try to slow her down a little bit. It's hard to do that with that team right there. If you try to help on the post, uh, somebody else is going to make you pay. And, uh, you know, since that's what happened in the first half, uh, what were they from three? They were uh, two for nine in the first half, and we we're in the game. And then the second half, they're six for 10, and here we go. So, uh, but again, great coach. And, uh, you know, they, they got after us defensively, kind of took us out of things we wanted to do maybe. And um, offensively, you know, the fast break points, hadn't even talked about that. We got beat 21 to six off fast break. Um, you know, we talked all week about we can't give up easy points. And that was off fast break and off second chance points off boards. Uh, we did a pretty good job on the boards, didn't get it done on the break. So. Uh, they find your weakness and they exploit it. Thank you again for your time this evening, Coach. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay.